call this meeting for the Kokomo City Board of Zoning Appeals to order. I invite everyone to please stand as we uh, offer the Pledge of Allegiance and Moment of Silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would ask if you have a cell phone to please make sure that's on silent as we move forward here. And our first uh, item on the agenda this evening, make sure mine's on silent, is uh, the approval of the minutes from the Tuesday, October 6th, 2020 meeting. I think we do, uh, we did have corrections that were sent out. Um, and then I also sent one today um, on page page five down towards the bottom seventh line from the bottom um, was I don't know TJ if you saw that email but um, is it Mr. Baird the attorney correct okay so uh, the, the minutes reflected B Mr. Beard B-E-A-R-D but it's Mr. B-A-I-R-D so I think that's been corrected yes. in the official minutes are there any other corrections or changes if not, do I have a motion for the approval of the minutes as corrected? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes as corrected of October 6th. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Our first case to be heard this evening is case P03-SE-20. Yes, the petition of Fortune Companies, Inc. requested a special exception per section 3.23 for a drug alcohol rehabilitation clinic in an IS institutional zone at 317 West Jefferson Street. I have a motion on this case. Second. Thank you both. Has there been any ex parte communication regarding this case? Okay. All right. Um, whoever's addressing this case, if you'd step to the microphone, please. If you'd state your name and address for the record and then just kind of tell us what it is that brings you here this evening. Sure. My name is James Wittick. I live at 105 39th Drive. Uh, the reason for here is this is our third after two. Um, Unanimous votes through the first and second reading and a unanimous vote through our first initial zoning proceedings. I'm here in hopes of obtaining a special exception for a specified use at the address listed on the motion. <clears throat> Happy to entertain any questions. If not, I'd like to hear the decision on moving and allowing that special exception for the property listed. Okay, so what exactly can you just kind of, for the record, go into just explain to us what it is that you're wanting to do at the property? Sure, no problem. I just want to keep it simple if you guys were aware of the project or not. Uh, the project is going to be used for what the special exemption designation identifies as a, a drug and alcohol rehab. It's going to be used for um, short-term residential care, which is a seven to 15 day model uh, for the treatment of addiction, addictive disorders and non acute mental health issues. So it requires uh, obviously the move to institutional zoning and then from there to make uh, the final special exemption use to allow for that specific identification. identification. So if you want some more detail, I'm happy to give about what the day-to-day -day operations are, what the impact on the community, parking, whatever you may need to know, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to hear. Sure, of course, of course. So. Um, it's a 24-hour model. It's going to run seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's going to provide approximately seven to 15, well, excuse me, it's going to provide seven to 15 salary jobs, and we'll also have some hourly wage earners. So we're going to source those jobs from the local community, less our medical director, who we've already identified, who's coming from Indianapolis, only because we have a, a very close working relationship, and I believe he's best in class 
in that particular area of medicine. He's an addictionologist and a psychiatrist. Um, it is for-profit by nature. We have a pretty integrated community approach that's been sent to the board previously about how we plan on in involving the entire community. We, we've done a very good job as a, as a group, um, meeting, shaking hands, introducing ourselves, doing a lot of demographic research on whether this project is needed in this specific area, which we've come to the unanimous conclusion that it is. Uh, you have a, un un uh, you, you cannot ignore the issues that surround this community and Howard County is in general right now. Uh, we spent a lot of time with other clinical and medical professionals coming up with a system of treatment that is best for a localized community. And what I mean when I say that is that how can people who live, work in Kokomo, in Howard County, and let's just be real, maybe the 50 miles from this address, how can we best serve them? People with jobs and families and work. And we've come up with a uh, 7 to 15 day short term stabilization model. So what I mean by that is if you're currently in alcohol or drug withdrawal, Outpatient treatment is not a setting for you. I've pulled the numbers, but I don't know them off the top of my head. There is an, uh, I believe there's been, not to quote me, but I shouldn't do this on the record, but there's something to the tune of 53% rise in non-fatal opioid hospitalizations to your local emergency room, which represents a significant amount of revenue that is costing the hospital system. We've spoke extensively with the corrective correction officers in your town. We spoke with the police, spoke with the mayor, spoke, spoke with a lot of people here um, in the process of introducing this idea. And it's been welcomed. Uh, we're really excited about being able to provide this. So if someone's drinking or actively in addiction or non-medicated mental health issues, chronic depression, suicidality, certain issues like that, which is I'm sure everyone on this board knows probably don't have to dig too far down your group of friends as somebody that suffers from these issues. Um, so we'll be able to provide short-term care, acute, subacute, short-term care here. So that doesn't mean your people have to go to a hospital 40 miles away. It doesn't mean they have to become another kind of burden because it's a very public situation when you walk into an emergency room in a small town. So we have a discreet location. There's no signage. Uh, and we'll be able to give them care there get them out on their feet, and then provide somewhere between 90 and 180 days of comprehensive extended care through our outpatient facility, which will be the second half of the building. And I did want to specify just one thing in, as it relates to zoning and use. The, the left side, 317, I believe is the address on that side of the building, uh, is going to be for our outpatient unit. It requires really no zoning changes at all. But we've taken the extra effort in putting all of this process together to add just eight beds of what we call subacute stabilization or detoxification. Because really, if we don't have this component to this outpatient treatment center, we cannot be the first level of touch. Meaning, if you call with a loved one, I can't help them immediately. I'm going to have to find a partner or another provider that can do detoxification. You're saying without the? Without these eight beds. Okay. So it's, it's absolutely critical to completing our local model because it can't be local if I take everyone and ship them out of town first. So I want someone within 15 minutes to be able to be in care, under the care of a doctor, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, medical staff, 24-hour supervision, and on the right medications to start getting their lives back on track. So when you say the left side of the building, um, so Arm Armstrong is uh, the west side. Okay. So which side are you... I guess it would be contingent on which side you're facing. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so, right. I mean, are you talking uh, east, north, south? Okay. So if I went down, uh, Jeff, I'm not sure. Boys, can you can you help me? Southeast side of the building. The southeast side of the building is what you're calling what he's referring to as the left side. Yes. Okay. So that was kind of the garage at one point, kind of the drive-through garage, correct? Okay. The back side of the building. Oh, for, okay. Garage went all the way through. Yeah, I was going to say the garage. I think initially years ago went all the way through. So, so that back kind of along the alley and the alley. Exactly. That's correct. We split it in half. Okay. There's two addresses at that location, so it's good. Okay. All right. Good deal. Oh no. That's okay. Can you say that there's a street? Where exactly? 
is the parking? Do you have 20 spots? Yeah, so part of the property that we're utilizing for this is, uh, help me again directionally here, the parking lot would be to the northwest, by the west, to the west of Armstrong. And that's, I think, it, it, when I went by, it looks like that area is going to be paved, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you'll have to come to the microphone. Yeah, yeah but back when I was a kid, my, my grandparents grew up just west of there, the brick house that's still uh, So you know the neighborhood, yeah. exactly. Okay, hold on. So. Scott Pitcher, 202 Sandy Court. The, the detox beds are along the alley side between the Washington Street and that alley right behind that. The offices and the meeting spaces and everything is on the Armstrong <coughs> Street side. Does, okay. that, does that help? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> so I'm trying to be as concise as I can. No, I mean, great. it's... I appreciate it. it yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to field any questions about any impact that you... Any perceivable impact. Um, so you're saying eight beds... And the program seven to eight, seven to fifteen days per bed, correct per person, and then ongoing outpatient. That's correct. And, to the tune of we can treat about thirty-five to fifty people at that location. Okay. Thank you. And I've uh, asked a lot of questions. So I'm going to let no, other people speak. Uh, just, just so everyone on the board knows, uh, this this has gone through rezoning. Um, uh, at the at the plan commission level and also two readings of city council. So their last step in the process is the special exception for tonight. Right, we'll, we'll put this business plan together. Can I see the front of it? That was me. Yeah, excellent job. Oh, thank you. Excellent job. <coughs> Probably the best business plan I've seen since I've Really? Yeah. Make sure the camera got that camera here and all that? Okay. It, it, was, it was a very, very well put oh, I, I sincerely appreciate that. It, it was a collective effort, and I'm glad I could put it into words that, you know, it's a complicated arena we work in, so trying to put it in a digestible format, it was, I did my best, so thank you. All right, any other questions from the board? Uh, your, it says medical facilities will be designed for eight residential private accommodations. What kind of, what do you mean by eight residential private accommodations? That's a great question. So generally it's delineated in our field between two major components, inpatient or residential, and then outpatient or intensive outpatient. It's kind of the big separation. So I use the word residential because detoxification is residential in nature, meaning you will reside in the same place where you receive treatment, unlike outpatient, where you will not reside in the location where you receive treatment. I understand that part. Well, my question is, is, is the living facilities these people will be in, will it be a, like a dormitory type setting where you'll have three or four people in, in a dormitory type setting, or will they be individual rooms? Or So right now there's eight individual suites with bathrooms en suite, uh, they are they take up the closest side to the alley so you'll if you drive past the property you'll see some windows so there's eight individual rooms okay. that's, that's what I want to know if they were individual rooms or yes sir okay any other questions from the board is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard regarding this case I do like the, this is, maybe I should say this after the vote, but I do like the, the work that's been done there. And I mean, you know, that, that building has a lot of history to a lot of people in our community and hate to see a building go to waste. So I'm impressed with the work there from, from the outside. Well, thank you. And thanks to the entire board. Thanks for the process and thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you for All answering right. the questions. There are no other questions. Uh, Mr. Oh, Mr. President, we yeah. need, we oh, need staff yeah. Findings. Hey, you know what? Sorry about that. I'm just so... You're just so fired I'm up. I'm so excited. i got to read my paper. Halloween candy. We're going to need your findings of fact. We're going to need your findings of fact. And way to keep me honest. My goodness. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm going to get paid the big bucks for. Keep you honest. If you want to, since you're, you're answering the questions at this point, why don't we just segue into your reading of your findings of fact, and then we'll hear the staff. <clears throat> That's wonderful. Uh, A, 
A, the proposal will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. This would be an improvement to the existing property and bring positive investment to the community. B, the requirements and development standards for the requested use as prescribed by the zoning ordinance will be met. The building will meet minimum requirements for front and side setback requirements on this zoning district. The plan for the development of the site will comply with all existing zoning ordinance standards. C, the granting of the exception will not subvert the general purpose served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other properties or uses in the same district and vicinity. No aspect of this development will subvert the ordinance or be injurious to other properties. By seeking this variance, we are attempting to be in full compliance with the current zoning ordinance requirements. D, the proposed use will consist of, excuse me, the proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. The site has access to safe pedestrian walkways. It would serve in the public health, safety, comfort, convenience, and general welfare by meeting an underserved need for a large portion of the community. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sheelon. Yes, staff findings for case PO3 SE 20. The proposal will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. While there may be concerns from the public granting, this special exception will help fill the needs of an underserved population in our city. Between April and June of this year, 15 residents of Howard County died of drug overdose. According to the Indiana State Department of Health's most recent data, for every 100,000 people in Howard County, there are over 190 emergency department, emergency department visits related to opioids alone. This is significantly higher than the state average of 104.5. This facility will promote public health and safety with a full staff of medical professionals and caregivers available 24 hours a day, 365 days per year. The proposed use of a drug uh, alcohol rehabilitation center will work to improve the quality of life for those who choose to take advantage of its services and will create an opportunity to stop participants from engaging in behaviors that continuously endanger the health of themselves and potentially other citizens. The requirements and development standards for the requested use as prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements for front and side setback requirements in this zoning district. The petitioner is invested in renovating the existing building and parking lot to meet the needs of the clinic. The building interior and exterior will be updated and the facility will have 20 dedicated off-street parking spaces. The existing building meets all ordinance requirements. <clears throat> the granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other uses, property or uses in the same district and vicinity. This property is situated near several businesses and an already busy intersection. Uh, new traffic generated by the clinic will likely have little or no impact on the area. The improvement to the existing building will raise the value of this previously vacant property. Employees and visitors will likely utilize the convenience store and other businesses a short walk away on Buckeye Street. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of this zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. There will be eight private beds available for the inpatient detox program as well as a full service medical clinic manned by 24-hour staff of nursing and behavioral health techs. After, after inpatient detox is complete, patients transformation to outpatient treatment plans. Per the City of Kokomo Comprehensive Plan, this area is marked for high density residential and downtown commercial uses. A 24-hour detox recovery clinic would be an appropriate addition to this area. The staff supports granting the special exception in order for First, Re First City Recovery Center to open a drug rehabilitation center. However, should this program become a nuisance, the planning director does hold the right to bring the petitioners before the board to reevaluate the use of the property. Okay, thank you. I do have a question. Um, might be for you, might be for Mr. Rethlick. Um, so the parking lot is across the street. I know we've had situations where maybe a church or some other institution has a, uh, I, I think maybe, um, I know Paul is here, the, um, the, the, the property on Wabash and North Street and Caddy Corner, we have the parking lot there. 
do we need to do anything with that in regards to um, is it like off premise parking or something? No, as long as it's with it's as long as per ordinance, as long as the parking lot is within 800 feet of the proposed uh, use, you're we don't have to do anything to it. Okay, good. Correct. I was going to say, I didn't nope. know if we should do like last month and wrap that in. So. Nope, nope. It's All fine. Right. Good deal. Good question. All right. I think uh, you guys think I've covered, I mean, I asked ex parte. We've heard findings of fact. Is there anything I've missed? <laughs> I think you're good. All right. I think we're ready. <laughs> okay. So that being said, if we're ready for a vote, we do have a motion and a second for the approval of case P03-SE-20. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next case to be heard is case P04-SE-20. Yes, the petition of David, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that last name. I'll, I'll throw that on Mr. Wyman when he gets up. Uh, requested a special exception per section 3.29 for an auto-oriented auto business high intensity in a C1 zone at 132 West Morgan Street. I right, have a motion on case P04-SE-20. I move that we approve case P04 SE 20 and adopt the findings of the petitioner as those of the board and make those findings part of the record. Thank you both. Any ex parte communication regarding this case? Okay. Um, whoever's addressing this case, if you could step forward, name and address, and all that good stuff. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Paul Wyman, 1533 West Lincoln, Kokomo, Indiana. Um, here tonight on uh, behalf of uh, David Simsack uh, to uh, get a special exception under C1 zoning for high intensity uh, auto sales at this property at 132 West Morgan Street. I think you'll see on both these properties, even the next one, they've already been kind of utilizing them that way over the years. And I think what this does is really cleans it up to show that that's how they are truly utilizing these properties. And the current tenant um, plans to make investments into the property, really clean up the buildings, paint them, make the, make the lot look really nice, lay out the cars properly, do all those sorts of things. So I think you'll be proud of both the lots when you drive by them. So is the building Part of the building and the parking lot there. Yeah, Isn't yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they'll do some customer parking right in front of the building then as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is the building itself just going to be used for the their office for the? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As someone pointed out, that the last building we had had a lot of history to it. This building also does. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I worked there in this building when I was in high school. Oh, wow. It was a grocery store owned by my great grandfather. Oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. It was a standard food store. Huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to get some markers put on the building for for both for both of your families. I think is what we need to do. <laughs> Good stuff. Small world. Yes, it is. I'd hate to have to paint it though. <laughs> Okay, any other, any questions from the board from Mr. Wyman at this point? Yeah, I'm, uh, I need a lot of clarification, I guess. Uh, the first thing opened up was this one mm -hmm. on the first case, and I know these cases are tied together, but I don't understand why we didn't have a letter or an address, because in this letter you quote, we want to repaint the location and match to the, our location at uh, 118 East Markham Avenue. In all honesty, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you don't have an actor, you don't have anything on this letter. Yeah. So the the letter came from the actual tenant themselves. They sent that believing that was their description of how they were going to run their business. And then we provided supplemental information to the plan commission via email after that. And so obviously they didn't put the address on that letter is what you're suggesting. And, and I don't know. Leave us in, in, in the very first paragraph. It says you're asking for rezoning. We're asking for a special exception. We're not yeah. asking. We, we I, I don't. I don't know if all this can be cleared up. But yeah, we, we started out. We started out looking at it as a rezone. Mm -hmm. it is how the original project begun, and so that's why it says that. So, yeah, I apologize. So we didn't generate a new letter with correct them. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure the supplemental email information has that in there. Another mark. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I got another legal question. Uh, when we make this exception, whose name do we tie to it? Uh, the owner of the going, property. The owner of the property. Yeah. Which would be the pro I'm, so I assume it's going to be Stewart Auto yeah. Options LLC. But I don't know who the the holder of the property will be. I don't know if they have a separate LLC set up for that or not. If you're reading this document, it states down here, company ownership and uh, legal uh, is Joshua Stewart, 100% ownership. So if yeah, which means you know, we, a, we always attach somebody to in case something goes wrong. Sure, ooh, the, ooh, ooh. but but the application has David Simsack on the application as the owner of the property. Josh Stewart is the tenant on the property. So I guess so. The, I guess the if question. We give this special exception now, and it's for this person running this car lot, and in six months or six years, Joe Smith wants to open one up. Is see free and clear to do it then because we're giving it to the owner? The exception goes with the owner, is my understanding. And Mr. Sheelan, correct me if I'm wrong, but so so long as uh, the owner has the property, it would attach to David. And so if there's a subsequent used car lot that That's would go correct. in, right. it would travel with him because Stewart's Auto oh, would be. I, I just want. Yeah, sure. yeah. So you I mean, it would be the the special exception would remain unless correct with the owner. With, unless with the owner sold the property. But Correct. he would also be the responsible individual to make right. sure that absolutely all the, you know, everything was upheld. Yeah. Right, Correct. which is how we filed it on the application that he would be the one getting a special exception. We wanted to provide you who the tenant already is on the property so that the information about how they're running in their business and the improvements they were going to make to the property. Okay. I'll give you a wait to the flames and facts, but here we talk about uh, if we're going to put any shrubbery or anything in there, they're going to have to do that. I guess my question is, if this person's coming forward and asking for something, if you go by the lot on it's South Mountain, awesome like there's five cars parked in the grass from the right hand. One of them is I'm almost completely on top of a shrub. Are you talking about the one at 2820? South Washington? I'm talking about this car lot. Oh, okay. South of Fountain yep. is going to be running that lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're in good faith, if you've got a lot now, and we're wanting landscaping, and you have some landscaping there, but I can't see it because there's cars parked on it. Well, I mean, it, unless those cars are in the right of way, there's not much we can. And I don't know if they are in the right of way or not. Right. It's something we'd have to check out. But if they're not in the city right of way, there's not much we they can. They can be off the lot. They can, as long as they're not in the right of way, correct. So why do we have shrub? requirement and all that if they're going to park on them. Well, because that, that landscaping was put in years ago, obviously. It's not anything new, not not at that lot. You're talking about the old lot that's already existing, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... I think if you got a lot and you, got some, you, and you want to make it look well, nice I don't front of it, I don't think there should be automobiles parked on it. I don't, it's, I it's don't disagree with you. I'm just that. saying if it's not in the city right of way, I don't, I don't know if there's much we can do about it. And maybe... TJ has more thoughts on it than, than I do as far as that goes. But I, I'd be absolutely glad to share that concern with the tenant. I, I hear you. You don't come from? And I, think I, it would look I, a lot I, I hear and you. I, and Mr. I think it would look a lot better I, if they push back. I would be yeah. glad to share that with them. Yep, I would agree with that. Yep. Are there other questions from the board at this time? All right. Go ahead and read your sure. findings of fact. Uh, the petitioner's finding of fact, the proposal will not be injurious uh, to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community uh, by way of the fact that the area already has a lot of business activity. Uh, the requirements uh, and development standards for the requested use as prescribed by the zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements in, from the front and side setback requirements on this zoning district. High intensity is part of the special exception for C1 uh, would be our response to that. 
the, granted, uh, the granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure the property or use in the same district or vicinity. And as we mentioned earlier, there's already a tremendous amount of commercial uh, business in this area. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein and the spirit and the intent of the zoning ordinance and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan, with many businesses being located around this property and many of them being retail. Uh, this is just another retail opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Schumann? Uh Yes. Staff findings for case PO4 SE 20. Proposal will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. The proposed special exception used for a used vehicle dealership for 20 to 25 cars should not be injurious to the general welfare of the community. The, pet the petitioner plans to utilize the existing structure on the lot and plans to use a lot only for retail sales of vehicles and the financing of those vehicles. No other services will be provided on this site. The requirements and development standards for the requested use as prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements for front and side setback requirements in this zoning district. The petitioner plans to utilize the existing building as an office. The petitioner will not be building any new structures as part of this special exception. Petitioner did not include information on how much parking they would have for customers' employees, but plans to have employees park behind the building and will leave space in front of the building for customer parking. The petitioner did not include a landscaping plan, and there is currently no landscaping on the site. See section 6.27 for requirements. The granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other property or uses in the same district and vicinity. Granting the special exception will infill a, vacant, a lot that is currently underutilized as it is surrounded by other commercial buildings and auto-oriented businesses, this business will not change the existing character of the area. The business operates on a standard schedule Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The petitioner anticipates having one employee on site during a typical day and up to four employees on site during busy season and plans to see between three and five customers a day. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of this zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. According to the City of Kokomo Comprehensive Plan, this property is in an area uh, selected for general commercial uses. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board at this point? I'm great so by on do they have to put landscape in or not? Yeah, we can we can talk to him about putting a little bit of landscape yeah, in. I absolutely. Think yes. Yes, that yeah, we'll we'll definitely make him put some landscape in. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want Yep. You know, it was mentioned there, right? Yep. That's why we put it in the findings. Anyone else? How would it be addressed about how they'll use the parking? Yeah, they're going to identify customer parking spaces designated in right in front of the building, so the customers can park directly in front. Because I see how if you come up into the parking lot, there's a whole lot of space. Yeah. Looking at the pictures. Sure. Just kind of they kind of the, the number of customers that are there at any given time on the lot at the same time is usually no more than one or two. Okay, I was just thinking yeah. the twenty to twenty-five cars. Mm -hmm. cars. Yeah, it's 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 spread throughout the day, pretty consistent. Okay. Right. Anyone in the audience wishing to be heard regarding this case? Okay. If not, we have a motion for approval and a second for case P04-SE-20. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. All righty. And our next case, case P05-SE-20. Yes, the petition of Ray Morris, a living trust, requesting special exception per section 3.29 for auto-oriented auto business high intensity in a C1 zone at 2820 South Washington Street. Do I have a motion on this case? I move to approve case number P05-SE-20 and adopt the findings of Petitioner, those the board, and make those findings part of the record. Second. All right, thank you. I will point out something I just noticed um, to the board and for our official file. Um, looks like all of these documents for case P05-SE-20 have Mr. Simzak's name at the top. 
Correct. Um, I asked that question two days ago. Okay. So it should say Ray Morris, right? I don't know. I assume those are going to find out tonight. Okay. Is that right? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I believe so, yes. Ray okay. Morris okay. should be the... They yes. Ray Morris accidentally right. typed David Simsek. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Morris right. should be up here instead yeah. of David. Yeah, that's correct. Sorry. Okay. So if we can ju just make sure our official ones, tonight we'll use these, but whatever goes in the record, we definitely want to make correct. sure that's accurate. Yep. Okay. Oh, any ex parte communication regarding this case? No. So... Same rule applies. This is going to be the owner, and this is who's the name. Correct. Correct. Yep. The trust will hold the real estate. The special exception will go with the trust, as opposed to an LLC. It's okay. Separately created. In yeah. I've asked this question for years, and I get a different answer every time. I'll ask it one more time. The last case, we didn't make that part of our motion. So the fact that everything we stated says that Simsac is going to be the owner, and it's going to be sitting there. Does it have to be part of the motion, or does our does our discussion take care of that? Our discussion should take care of that because it's in the minutes. Is that correct? Cor oh, are you talking about the shrubbery? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, he's talking. He's talking about who who actually has ownership of the special exception. Right. Since it wasn't said in the motion, uh, Mike's asking if our discussion takes care of that, and I would assume it would because it would be in the minutes. Yes, but I mean, by operation of law, it goes with the property owner anyway, so it doesn't matter whether it's in the minutes or not. Okay. It would just go with the owner of the property because the owner applied. Okay. Does that make sense? But it would be in the minutes anyway, so Correct. if there was ever, ever any. There'd be clarification yes. as well. Correct. Would that be the same yeah. thing as, as if, you know, I know we've, we've added within the motion that if the, if the property owner should sell that, that the exit. The special exception does not go with it. Correct. Would that take care of that also? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it, it goes with the owner. So if that owner sells the property and there's a new owner, if someone else would come yeah. forward after that and want to do this same thing, they'd have to go back through this process. Correct. Okay. Yeah, Correct. so for example, if the tenant of the property worked out an agreement to buy it from the owner, they would come back and say, hey, we're the current tenant of the property. This is how we're operating. We'd like to retain Correct. the special exception. Correct. And okay. then you guys can say, yeah, you've been great on the property. Continue on. Right. Or you could say, hey, you didn't plant that shrub like we asked you to do. And, <laughs> and <laughs> To the planet, I still want parking on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, we said no ex parte communication. <clears throat> so, Mr. Wyman, the floor is yours again. Very good. Uh, same as the last case. Um, uh, we, we have a lot here that uh, has been utilized over the years for a variety of things, including some, some car activity. And this just gives us an opportunity to clean it up. And uh, we're looking for a uh, high intensity special exception under the C1 zoning at 2820 South Washington Street. And it'll be the same tenant as the last property as well. They'll be on both locations. Okay. Any questions specific to this property from the board? Okay. If you want to go ahead and read your findings of fact. Sure would. Petitioner's finding of fact, the proposal will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community, as there are already uh, a lot of business activity uh, in this area. The requirements and development standards for the requested use of the prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements for the front and side setback requirements on this zoning district, which a high intensity is part of the special exception for C1. The granting of this of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by the zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other property or uses in the same district in the vicinity. Uh, as we mentioned, there already have car rentals, et cetera, in this location in the past and, and much business activity in the area, with, including retail. And then the proposed use of the be consistent with the character of the district they're in and the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan uh, by virtue of many businesses located around this property. Thank you. Mr. Sheline? Yes, uh, staff findings for case PO5 SE 20. Proposal will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. 
the proposed special exception used for a used vehicle dealership for 20 to 25 cars should not be injurious to the general welfare of the community. The petitioner plans to utilize the existing structure on the lot and has already repaired and sealed the existing blacktop. The petitioner plans to use the lot only for retail sales of vehicles and the financing of those vehicles. No other services will be provided on the site. The requirements of development standards for the requested use as prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements for front and side setback requirements in the zoning district. The petitioner plans to utilize the existing building as an office. The existing building meets all setback requirements and development standards. The petitioner will not be building any new structures as part of this special exception, and the petitioner did not include information on how much parking they would have for customers' employees, but plans to have employees park behind the building and will leave space in front of the building for customer parking. The petitioner did not include a landscaping plan, and there is currently no landscaping on the site. Uh, see section 6.627 for requirements. The granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other property or uses in the same district and vicinity. Granting this special exception will unfill a lot that is currently underutilized. The base aesthetic improvements, the basic aesthetic improvements the petitioner has completed, uh, painting the building, resurfacing the blacktop, make the lot a more desirable property. As it is surrounded by other commercial buildings, restaurants, and businesses, this business will not change the existing character of the area. The business will operate on a standard schedule, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The petitioner anticipates having one employee on site during a typical day and up to four employees on site during busy season and plans to see between three and five customers per day. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of this zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. According to the City of Kokomo Comprehensive Plan, this property is in an area select, selected for general commercial uses. Okay, thank you. Having heard the findings from both the petitioner and the staff, do we have any questions at this point from the board? Anyone in the audience wishing to be heard regarding this case? Mr. Wyman, anything you'd like to add? No, thank you. I would like to say something, Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. The reason I brought the whole shrubbery up, I don't know if you remember, we had a car dealership on Markland. They completely redid one lot and everything. And we insisted they put shrubbery in, and they went to great expense and did an outstanding job. So I'm thinking if it was fair for them, it's fair for anybody that comes after them. That's why I asked the question. Well, and, and I understand that. The, dif the difference is that the one you're talking about was a new build from the ground up. No. So, yes, it was. Yeah, but we but he changed the land. He put landscaping I, on the old site. He dug up. I understand. I understand. Right. He dug up. I understand. Asphalt on the old site that had been his car dealership and put it, 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 it did an outstanding job. Uh, so my question was, that's that's where I'm coming from. We had, we had that really tailored to tailor, tailor that why is that was my question. Yeah. That was why. That's where it was generated. The, the intendant has been making improvements to these properties. I mean, you know, if, you, if you'd have seen them a few years ago, I mean, even the blacktop that he was talking about, the, the, the properties are being improved. And so having a discussion with them about greening them up a little bit and doing some of that shrub, I, I don't think that's going to be a difficult conversation at all. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Besser. All right, if there's nothing else, we do have a motion on the floor and a second for the approval of case P05-SE-20. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there any other business to be brought before the board this evening? I have no other business, Mr. President. Anyone else? All right. Do we have a motion for adjournment? And I'll make a motion we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you all.